Hello, good morning to you all. I'm here to encourage you with God's word as usual. And may God bless you for your time that you do watch our live streams in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I bless you and I glorify you that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I pray as your people, Lord, listen to your word. And I pray that may your word bring illumination, elucidate, throw more light, understanding unto them. So that, Lord, you have understanding to apply the principle of your of your word for them to be fruitful and be productive in Jesus mighty name. If there are those that Lord you have called them into ministry or to do a special assignment for you or something to do in your kingdom and Lord and they are refraining from what you have told them because they couldn't understand what why you are saying this. Holy Spirit have mercy on them and support them and assist them and reveal yourself to them so that Lord it becomes uh, uh, tangible for them to follow. Suit in Jesus mighty name. Amen. So we are here considering about Prophet Jonah, that the Lord told him that he should go to a country called Nanive to preach the gospel, to prophesy judgment over the Nanivians. And then he was not willing to go. So he paid a fare in the shape and he was going to an opposite direction because he didn't, he didn't want uh, the message to, uh, I mean, uh, reach the Nanivians and all his intentions was he wanted God to judge them like he did Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy them because he was living around so he knew the sins of the people. There were over 120,000 men and women in the land of the Nanivians, uh -huh. I mean Nanive. Uh, there were 120,000 uh -huh. and, uh, and even more. And they practice witchcraft, magic power, and suicide, and then fornication, adultery, idol worship, and many other things, ritual, murdering, and mass murdering, and many, many, many more. And they were greedy, and they, their God was gold, was diamond, was uh, the things they have used their hands to build, and many other things. So God came down and saw that these people are really uh -huh. serving the idols instead of him. And even then, God didn't want to, like God didn't enforce them to worship him, but he wanted them to follow the justice, the principle he has put in place uh, for the human race, but rather they have perverted the laws of the land and doing what they wanted to do. So God sent a prophet to warn them. The reason God sent a prophet was to give them a last well and if per adventure they agree and they stop or repent from what they were doing the god would refrain his anger will be subsided anytime god is after somebody he will send somebody to warn him severally if the person uh, uh, repented of his sins uh, really repented means turn around then god will have compassion on him to save because he knows that human beings are dust they are clay. he knows he, he knows where they are coming from if god hates him right now he will not come back again so god gave them a second chance and he sent a very good prophet to go there and he too he rebelled, he disobeyed God and disobeyed to, I mean, to his duty in the Lord and he didn't go as a prophet. Why did you become a prophet? There are many who have become prophets, they have become men and women of God. They are doing a lot of jobs, including their prophetic ministry, including their evangelistic ministry. And so many of them, God hadn't called them because they are chasing money and doing things, excuse me, God hasn't told them to do. Uh, they are swaying from the purpose of God and the plan of God for their life into something else. So God told this man, Jonah, to go and proclaim judgment on Nanive. And he didn't go. So simple that I'm meaning today, just simple to obey God. The Lord said, you are not called a prophet, a pastor. You are a carpenter. So I'm a prophet. Because he has been a prayer warrior and God has opened his eyes some more. He will put the carpentry tools aside and he enters into ministry and you cause a great havoc, a great, great error in the kingdom of God. Confusion here and there because he has not been called by God. He had been called to take care of animal, animal kingdom or uh, domestic animals and whatever. Uh -huh. So please take good care of yourself. The Lord is with you and he's going to do so much for you. So what is God telling you? 
what are the requirements and what are the missions or uh, the purposes for your lives? What are the things that God has in store for you? What is God saying about your calling? What is God saying about the hand of God upon you or what you have to do? Uh, do you have an assignment or something that God told you and you are refraining from? Uh, do you have a mission? Do you have an agenda from God? Or um, because people are doing something and it, it seems to be nice to you, so you too, you're also following suit. It is time to seek the face of God for God to call you or to tell you, or even if God has told you to, to do something for him, wait for God to use men of God to confirm what God had told you already so that you may carry on. So the focus should not be on people, should be on God and his assignment for your own life. And as you obey, because the beginning of ministry might be tough, but as you persist and you keep on persisting, later you begin to enjoy the fruit of your labor. May the Lord be with you and may God grant you all your wishes, all your heart desire in life and in ministry in any area of your life. And maybe many of you too, you have become disappointed that what God told you hadn't come to pass so you don't want to uh, think about ministry anymore or be a singer, be in the choir or be under a pastor or be in that church. You have been, said many years now, all your heart desire hasn't come to pass and this and that. No, you need to follow God. If God has really called you, there may be a difficulty, there may be hardship somewhere, but God will see you through at the later end. May the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So now we are talking about don't live from the presence of the Lord and your duty. About Jonah, uh -huh. so you need to rate this with your life. Are you running away from God? Because God told you to do something. Uh, you do not want to obey the Lord because it seems to be difficult for you. So you do not want to obey the Lord and because um, there are people, when even they come to church, not in my church, but so many prophetic uh, I mean, uh, churches, and sometimes they enter with an expectation that what is on their heart is what, the, what God should use the man of God to confirm. Sometimes it comes to pass, sometimes God will may speak a different thing. So if you come to church and God didn't mention something that was on your heart, but he says a different thing, they are disappointed. But what God said, said to them that was a different thing was the will of God. And I know I've seen many in life like this. God could prophesy that you are not to become a doctor or a teacher or a pastor, but you are to become this or that or that. And I said, oh man, I, this, this is not part of me. This is not a cause that God told me to do. This is not a cause that I'm doing now. I'm doing this cause. But after one year or two, something happens and then they change to what God said. They are not patient to listen to the man of God. Yeah, this is the cause you are doing, but God didn't confirm the cause you are doing, but he confirmed a different, he mentioned a different thing. If God, God has mentioned a different thing, you take it, and because the day the prophet spoke was on the day that you are going to act, you receive the seed, and you go and mute upon the, make it and hatch on the seed. You also pray about it till God speaks to you. Prophet is not God. Prophets are not God. They are the ones that God uses them to convey his messages to individual people or group group of people. So when you are told, you do what? You keep it and pray about it before you carry on. Nobody is forcing you to do something that God hasn't told you. But just the mind of God is so important. So this one, Jonah was a prophet indeed. He used to hear the voice of God. He had the ability to hear the, the voice of God for himself. And then God told him to go and prophesy. If it were to be me, I would have gone and stood there and declared a word and that's it. But he did not go and the rather he went through long journey. He went through so much and then he, he nearly, his, his life nearly jeopardized other people's lives in the canoe or in the ship. And we are here to read this and I believe you know the story of Jonah. Very good. Okay. So Jonah's disobedience. Okay. Now we are reading Jonah chapter 1, 1 to 17 and that will help you to really, really figure things out for yourself. Learn something here. May God bless you. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim judgment against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away to Tarshish to escape from the presence of the Lord and his duty as his prophet. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, the most remote of the Phoenician trading cities. So he paid the fare and went down into the ship to go with them to Tarshish away 
from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord, the Lord hurled a great wind toward the sea, and there was a violent tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors were afraid, and each man cried out to his God and to and to lighten the ship and diminish and diminish the danger they threw the ship's cargo into the sea. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was sound asleep. So the captain came up to him and said, how can you stay asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps your God will give a thought to us so that we will not perish. And they said to another, come, let's cast lots, so we may learn who is to blame for this disaster. So they cast lots, and the lots fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, now tell us, who is to blame for this disaster? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew and reverently fear and worship the Lord, the God, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the man became extremely frightened and said to him, how could you do this? For the man knew that he was running from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, what, what should we do? do to you so that the sea will become calm for us for the sea was becoming more and more violent Jonah said to them pick me up and throw me into the sea then the sea will become calm for you for I know that it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you Nevertheless, the man rode hard, breaking through the waves to return to land, but they could not because the sea became even more violent, surging higher against them. Then they called on the Lord and said, Please, O Lord, do not let us perish because of taking this man's life and do not make us accountable for innocent blood for you. O oh Lord, have then as you pleased. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. Then the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared, appointed, destined a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. Here is the word of the Lord we have shared so far. Interesting word. If he would have gone to Nineveh, everything would have been well with him. He had nearly even destroyed the lives of those he was, he was traveling with, Jonah. And even still, he didn't want to go. He didn't even pray to God in the kind of law, forgive me, I'll go back. So like the, those who were sailing could have turned to where they picked him. But he said, throw me into the sea, which means he wanted to die. He didn't want to go. He, he, doesn't, he didn't want the Nanivians to become born again or to change. There are people like that. They don't want God to use them to change the life of other people because when they are changed, they think that they become better people than them. How could this be? It's impossible. How could it be an hindrance to somebody's salvation or healing or redemption? Even in a church, in the body of Christ, when other people are getting blessed more than others, there's envy everywhere because to air is human. We are human beings and maturity hasn't grown in some of us. We begin to envy one another that this pastor has gotten this, this prophet has gotten that, and they'll begin to envy. We wish that something happens to him, happen to the bishop or man of God or woman of God or something, or a Christian sister in the choir or whatever. We wish that something happens to him. How could we do this? It's the same thing. God has sent us to use us to save lives in the church, out of the church. But it's like we are nice with people outside there, but those that even we are with in the church, sometimes we hate each other. How, how, how could we do this? That we pastors, we hate each other. We prophet, we, we hate each other. How could we do this? 
Where is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. It's not the bad news. May God have mercy on us. May God change us. We are to be used of God to change others. But we are hindering people to enter the church. We are, our character, our character is so dirty that we can't even, people can't look at us to be born again. We are nice outside there, but in our houses where we live, a different life. When you go to church, a different life. When you leave the church, a different character. Ah, ah, ah. Jesus, God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. As a prophet, look at that. He asked them to throw him into the sea. And he didn't know where he was going, whether he was going to die or something. But God also took him there to the fish he prepared for. In the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. He didn't eat and drink. He was praying, praising God and praying, begging God. In Jonah 2 going to Trey and God took him there. God has given you assignment. Whether you are a core prophet or a pastor, whether you, whether you are part of five for the ministry or not, as a Christian, God has given us your assignment is to win the lost. Your assignment is to go into all the world and preach the gospel and win the lost. No matter all types of jobs that God has given to us, we are doing in inside the kingdom. We, we all are qualified and called the same way. We have been given power to baptize people, to make people born again, to evangelize to people who are uh, not born again, to be born again. It is time for Christians or born again to be born again. It is time so that our character should not hinder anybody from entering in, into the kingdom of God. I mean, God have mercy on us. And as we read, I believe it will help you. So don't run away from God's presence and don't run away from your responsibilities. Whatever God told you to do, are you doing the same thing? Are you, or you are doing with complaints or you are doing with joy or happiness? I want to give you some direction that will help you to boost up your faith and boost up your prayer ability so that you keep on praying and focusing on the Lord. May God bless you this wonderful morning. Amen. So, direction number one. God is going to speak to you concerning his assignment. If you don't have one, God from today will speak to you and tell you what you have to do. Whether you are to join a choir, whether you are to sweep in the church, you have to find something doing in the church. Even if the, the prophet, the man of God hasn't told you, find something doing inside the church and out of the church. Mainly to evangelize and to win the loss for Christ into the church. And God will bless you for that one. He said, we should go into the whole world and preach the gospel. We all have been called with the same calling to preach the gospel. So God, God is going to speak to you concerning his assignment. Number two, uh, will you accept him or reject him? If he tells you something that doesn't favor you, to you, it does not favor you because he wanted to be a, a prophet. You wanted to be a, a, become what uh, somebody who sees See ya. So if you are not seeing, if, if you see and God say you are not a prophet, you are a pastor, then you are disappointed. No, 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 no. No, are you God? Can you take the place of God? Can you detect to God? Allow God to have his own way. Will you accept him or reject him? That is number two. Number three, if you accept him, you will have your peace of mind. Jonah didn't have his peace of mind when he refrained from God, ran away from the presence of God and also from his duty as a prophet. He went to an opposite direction. Look at the consequences that he faced. God was so merciful. The fish should have, should have killed him. But God prepared a very big fish to take him to a place that he didn't want to go. Go to a place that you don't want to go. Go to a place that God says you should go, but to you, it's not a place that you want to go. Go to the direction that God wanted you to go. Don't go to a place that you wish to go. No. Hallelujah. So number three, if you accept him, you will have your, your peace of mind. And if you don't accept him, then you don't have your peace of mind either. Okay. Number four, if not, then trouble is coming. Trouble is coming. Somebody created you into this earth or into this world, listen to the voice of God and follow suit what God tells you to do. Then you have your peace of mind. If you don't do, then trouble is coming, I, I promise you. Number five, you may leave him, but he is everywhere. Where will you run to? Where? <laughs> 
You can't have anywhere to hide. Number six, be careful. Your journey does not affect others. Your journey in life, your journey in ministry, whatever you are doing in, whether you are rebelling or disobeying God, be careful that your disobedience does not affect your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, and those around you. Because if God becomes angry, it will affect all those who are in the ship or in the car, in the house, and where you live and where you are going, it, it will affect them. So be careful, your journey does not affect others. And number seven, come to God and do his perfect will. Come to God and do whatever God tells you to do. Come to God, come to church, seek him, humble yourself, tell the men of God to give you a job to do, they will pray. And to, to, by God, they can tell you what you are to do and what you are not supposed to do. If you don't have anything doing, you just get close to your local men and women of God in your churches and they will determine, they will tell you what to do so that you have your peace of mind. I know that today's meeting has been a great help to you. I want to hear you, uh, I mean, contributing or supporting or sowing your seed. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear you talking about it. I want to hear your opinion. May the Lord bless you and thank you for hearing me. And I know that I will come your way the same next week, Saturday, and I declare you are victorious, you are the head, not a tail above and not beneath. Have a good day. Bye.